as I connect with you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to welcome you tonight as we all come together. And this is the day the Lord has made. I hope I find you blessed tonight coming together in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope every one of you find you in the right place, in your right mood, in the mighty name of Jesus. Time to connect tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Time to connect as we are all coming. It's time. Just tell somebody, we are ready tonight. We are ready to venture deep into the word of God, to venture deeper into the presence of the master. So tonight it is a great night. I see you are blessed to have us tonight here. I thank God for your lives. It is amazing. It is amazing. Hallelujah. I, I, do you know what? God has been so faithful. He's so, so beautiful to bring us together on the same platform, getting ready to go and deeper dive into the word of God. Our lives are based upon the word of God. Whatever we want, whatever we're up to, it's just in the word of God. Saints, there's nothing. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceeds through the mouth of the Lord. So that's why that brings us all tonight together. Please just tell somebody, church has just started. Let's all make sure our sharing button is one of our same thing that we need to find. I don't, you don't need to be told what to do because right now the word wants to be heard all over. I thank God for what you're doing, sharing it everywhere. So many people are being touched. Lives are being changed all over across the globe. So I I'm coming to you tonight and just want to pray for you before we get started because we are really getting into some stuff. We are addressing stuff. We are not trying to run away from stuff. We are a generation that's so resilient. And you know what? Until justice is served, we are not going to shut up. And we are not, until justice for my life, for your life is saved. Hallelujah. We are not going. We are still continuing to bang the door of salvation, to bang the door of our deliverance, to bang the door of our, of our prosperity, to do the bang of the door of our ministries. Wherever what we are, we, I'm telling you, we are going to be persistent, consistent tonight. So it is a amazing where we are finding you from Cape Town. I thank God for you. Those who are in Jobek, I just thank God for you. Wherever you are right now in America, I thank God for your life. Hallelujah. Here in Europe, I come to you as well. So let me just pray for you as you are coming so that your ears and your, you know what, your heart is ready to receive. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come tonight in the mighty name of Jesus with heart of thanksgiving. As we are coming into your presence, let our eyes, Father, be open enough to see the spiritual world that we are in right now and our ears to hear from you almighty god there's a lot of noise going on our attention has been taken by so much that is happening but we want to know still that you are still sitting upon the throne right now you are touching lives tonight those who are feeling depressed those who are going through stuff as we are right now entering into actually even getting to address our stuff because it's all in the word of god we thank you and we give you praise and honor in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen so tonight uh, we are doing what we always done very well is to dive straight into the word of God as you have seen right now I always want to get your attention every now and again because it takes the attention of somebody what's next so we want to go into the word of God and look you know you know you look I think when you go in our podcast right now the title I put is said but even so I don't know what you know it's a title can you imagine but even so but even so, what is it about? We find we are going to salvage something from the word of God. Because even in your situation, where you are saying, uh -uh, I don't know what's happening, even whatever is left around me, but even so. In my language, they say, Nyango shakadaru. that means even as it is, there might be something. We might pick up something because we are in a world where God is doing wonders. Even but so, but even so. We want to find out in the te context of this text that we are coming to bring this e evening in the mighty name. We find it for those who, please, you know what, make sure you do the scriptures. It helps some people who are coming even later to join us. So scriptures are very good. When you hear, please type them. If you can copy and paste and put them over there, it will help some other. You'll be helping me to preach with you. So let's all do the same thing right now because it's your duty for you to do those things. So let us all go straight to the book of our our main scripture is coming from the book of uh, um, Mark, 
John chapter 11, sorry, John chapter 11, verse 21 and 22. We are going to the book of John 11, 21 and 22. So it's very important. We are going to look to it's just another extract from the scripture. We know this when we come to John 11, people know the story of our brother Lazarus. But from that, I've done an extract where I've taken this text only where it says, but even so. What happened when this text come in, came in? What happened when Mary and Martha, the brother of Lazarus, when they said, even so, but even so, but something we want to get to address, what is it? Even in your life, there's something that has gone off your, hand, your handle. You can't handle anything. You can't control what is going on right now. You are like, God, where are you? What can I do? What is going to happen with my situation? What's going on in the world? But you know one thing, because you know where you take your attention to, then you go to a place where you say, but even so, Lord, I'm still trusting you. That's why you see, even Job, we understand Job says, you know what, though they slay me, but yet will I still continue to trust in my God. Though they slay me, though they slay me. That means regardless of every situation around you, there's always God who is always coming into your situation. So let us go and deep dive in and find out what's happening here to this text. We find it. Verse number 21, he says, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Where now we take the extract. That's where he says, but even now, hmm, but even now, but even now, that's where I want you to put that title to your service. But even now, if you were here, any one of us right now, you are at a problem right now and sit at a juncture where you are saying, I needed you when I needed you. But now, where have you been? But even now, even now, we want to come and address real issues here. We want to address real issues. We don't want to run away. There's so much to preach about, but there's always one who will become the centerpiece of what we are in this time and in this time that we are in. Children of God, for you to have survived the past 12 months, there's something God that he has done tonight that is taking whatever you are feeling and say, but even now, but even now, wow. But even now, we want to look at this one in a different dimension. We find this story, but even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Right? This is where it's really the tar you know that you know the rubber hits the ground, the, the tarmac. Because we find now this this are desperate women who are in a desperate situation. We know the story of Lazarus, how it has actually touched so many people. People have composed music and everything. We have known our brother Lazarus in different dimensions. But Lazarus is quite actually the centerpiece of this whole thing uh, of the drama where everything starts to happen around the disciples. People who are around Jesus and people who are around in the village, even who? M M Mary and what? And Martha. We want to see there's something we are all going to learn from the all spectrums of life, from Martha, the people in the city, and the disciple. There's something we want to salvage out of this message. We find that now he said, if you were here, Lord, our brother would have not died. What do you do in those moments when you're saying, if you were here, this thing would have not happened, Lord. I fasted. I've done this. But where are you? You know, these questions are asked regularly. And I'm dealing with them even here right now in my office. I've dealt with them day in, day out. I'm being asked the questions that are so hard with people. That where is God, Pastor John? Yes, where was God when I ended up being there? Why am I have to fight it out when he should have protected me? You've got that question. You went through what you went through and said, why did I have to struggle to get here when I should have taken me just like that? But there's something... We'll find out of this text. Let's see. Because now, one thing I love about these guys, in as much as they were trying to complain about Jesus, not coming at the right time when they should have come, their brother when he was sick, well, there's something I love. They knew their point of contact. 
These are the things I'm going to, to actually give you as pointers to each one of us who are under the sound of my voice. Wherever you are participating in the service tonight, they should, you should look for your point of contact. What is your point of contact? Martha and Mary, only they found out in their situation was to know that G Jesus was friendly to who? To, 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 to Lazarus. And he, they were the one hospitalized, who were making, you know, to, to make hospitality to Jesus. He was coming and dining with them. So they had actually a relationship they had actually a relationship but there was something missing that I'm going to tell you tonight that you are going to see are uh, within this whole context of the text tonight because we find we find that you know the mother and Mary are saying if you were here because they are used to see him there but they did not understand who he was it's another thing to think you have got somebody Somebody you don't even understand who they are. And this is the scenario. Now these guys are trying to say, if you were here, that means you are led. We are doomed. So our life is done. Whenever you have the word if, not when. When you say if, that means that statement is dead. That means everything is dead. The, the whole text, when you actually salvage out of this, it tells you that when Mary... And mother said, if Jesus, you were here, that means if, then it's dead. Lazarus could have not died. But he, were they the only victims to this? No, all of us were victims. If, if I'd done this, if I would have taken this route, if I'd asked so and so, if I consulted this and that, I would have not been where I'm at. But let me tell you, you're not the only one because now we are going back to take from the word of God. What is it that, why you are there? When, why am I here? If God was in it, so why am I here? What would have happened if God, but there's something I want to trace and tell somebody. I'm coming to people who are sitting right now in front of their phones, right now touching their smartphone, on the iPad, right now on your computer, whatever, on your television. Right now as you are watching me, as you are participating in this service, let me tell you, we've got a God who is not contained, who is doesn't even contained because he knows he is a God. He's the God himself. Above there's no one like him. He doesn't need you to help him to do anything hallelujah how much he complained it doesn't matter how many ifs how many parts how many whens and why he still is not because he's still a god himself by himself is god tonight we are dealing with things because right now while we are in this marathon of prayer and destroying things we are going to see breakthroughs just like that they're just gonna come some of them you are going to be surprised because they are just happening because it's not concerned about but and it's not concerned about if it's not concerned about when and how because he's god he lives outside, but when and if. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm helping somebody tonight. I just feel it already that we are getting somewhere. Do you know, I'm really happy because I'm hearing so many testimonies coming through this podcast. This is what makes me come over here every day. I, I, no one can stop us, please. I thank God for you who are always making it happen over here. Because right now, all over the globe right now, we, we have become the trademark right now. Even on the platform, we become the trade name right now. So let's make it happen in the mind so that we reach our broken society, our broken community community even our broken brothers and family think that are not because there's jesus who is needed right now even in our moment when we say but even now but even now hallelujah so but even even now i know this is one thing that was left a little bit in Mara, martha and mary that they had a glimpse but they were not too sure it's another thing to have a glimpse but still not too sure. But one thing he said, I know that if you ask your God, you ask from God, huh, he will give you whatever you want. That means that's one a little bit of faith. In as much as their faith was actually shaken, but there was still a remnant there of saying, if you ask your dad, your God, definitely we know that he always hears you. That's only what's left in them. Not for them, but for, for God, Jesus. Because they were not trusting what was in them about knowing Jesus. So they were trusting only Jesus to Jesus himself that fixed this. This is your mate. You used to have dinner with him. Now he's dead. You're coming late. Come on, Jesus. How can you be cruel? 
I could understand how they were boiling inside, how they were feeling inside so furious that Jesus, but one thing I love, God is God. This is because what we are trying to learn from tonight about this, where I'm actually coming to bring this whole thing, is to know that their faith was tested. Jesus was starting his ministry. As he was starting his ministry, hallelujah, God wanted to make a name of himself through everything. He did not come when Lazarus was sick because he knew that that was only going to be a minor miracle. Ah, he didn't come even when last people were at the funeral. No, he didn't come at the funeral. They say, I'll come and preach at the funeral when he's dead. No, he didn't come at the burial. Hallelujah. What do you do in a situation when you are counting your failings and you are counting every negligence, you are counting every rejection, and you are counting every denial, you are counting every shame upon your life that I missed here, I missed the day, I missed that. Who shall love me? Who shall like me? Who is going to accept me? Hallelujah. This is the situation. This situation now, it was intolerable. Intolerable. We get it to a point where you're like, Am I still approachable or are they still coming to me? I'm still, am I going to still be the same person I thought I would? Because something would have been taken out. The whole relationship was so mad. Because what I see here, Jesus caused the situation. He let the situation go outside of hand, which actually took these guys to question their relationship. Have you ever noticed where you are going together with some people, one or the other? For whatever reason, they tell you that I'm not going to make it. But because of how much you have always been in touch and in connection, but for that reason, that day, you are trying to question that. But why, 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 why has he done this? Because this is not him. Now it's questioning, was he really me, real? You know, that's when we question our relationship. I understand their relationship was shaken. Their relationship was shaken towards Jesus because the one that I told was the Messiah, was King of Kings. Now he's letting down his own friend. This is the friend of Jesus. He's not anyone other than a friend of Jesus, Lazarus. And he's not coming to his friend. And the sisters who were making dinner were the one disappointed to think we were making our dinner and, you know, making hospitality to Jesus. And is the one who's letting us down. I mean, times if we felt people who think we've let, you know, let us down in the time when we needed them. But let me tell you, this was only the beginning of what God can. Hallelujah. Do you know your situation? I'm coming to people who have got situation that looks like right now it has brought tension in your family. It has brought actually division in your family. But let me tell you, when God starts to bring you together, you are going to be surprised when things are going to happen because God is only saying, I want to do the big one. I want to create the big one. I just want to do the big one. I'm not going to do the little ones. Otherwise, you won't even recognize. Sometimes your journey looks so rough, but God is saying, I'm about to show myself strong because there were four or three people within the whole context of this text tonight where I'm going to actually address because... You know, Mary and Martha, hallelujah, these are the only left in the house. Now, actually, now trying to organize the funeral. And they're trying to send guys to go and tell Jesus. Jesus is not concerned about the death of his friend. He's ministering in another village. Bethany, he has already left Bethany. He's forgotten about the village where he's always been. Sometimes the people you've always seen around you, the time when you needed them, you ask if they moved in the city. If they moved away, these days I can't see them. Jesus is like, he never bothered. He never felt bothered. He never felt bothered. He never felt bothered. Hallelujah. But tonight, one thing I want to thank God for your life. Because whatever you are going through, even the things you are thinking, well, he has forgotten. He has paid. He's not paying no attention. No, he wants to do some demonstration. We are talking about the season of demonstration. Do you know I'm loving even this week? It was a full of demonstration. I've been seeing deliverance. It's happening to another level when things are happening remotely. I don't need to touch you. I don't need to touch you. Just, just from afar, things are happening all over the continent because that's the God who wants to demonstrate Himself. When you say, "Ah, uh -uh how has this happened?" Because He's in a demonstrative mood. We are the children of power. 
We are the children of demonstration of the power of God that was given unto us as a church, that was given unto you as a child of God. It's given out to the ministry to go and minister to the world that is sick today, where you are going to pray for the sick, where you pray to those who are going to mental breakdown, those people who are in depression. Whatever is going on, the church, let's wake up because Jesus wants to show his demonstration. Let's wake up, children of God. It's time for demonstration. God want to do great and mighty things through you tonight and we find jesus is in a situation now does he come now this is only things that is just welcomed he's welcomed in an environment where it's being said ask them say jesus if you were here what a welcome to go to some people where you are just asking where were you is this time now you are coming you must be kidding me already it dampens the whole atmosphere. I would want to imagine already what would, what happened with already Jesus' approach with women with tears and who are saying, if you were only here anyway, now you are just coming now? Anyway, even so. <laughs> but even so. They are trying to actually take something so that they don't show much that Jesus, we don't need you this time. Because you're already late, because this brother, they are trying, but, but they're just saying but. Because but changes the whole connotation. It changed the statement. If you were here, so they were trying to salvage a little bit of a relationship here. I know if you ask your dad, normally because he hears you, about what? Because if you go down the line, <laughs> you see, the statements are contradictory. If they're saying he would hear them, they're the same woman who said, He's asleep. He said, no. Are you telling me he's going to wake up the day of resurrection? Already they were confused. Their contradictory statement already within the whole text. So they were not talking in the sense, if you take this scripture, but now, even now, it doesn't make them the right people. They were still in doubt because down the line, the scripture, it will tell you when they were being told that he's asleep, show me where he is. He said, are you talking about the resurrection to come? Because they've never heard about the resurrection, that Jesus is the resurrection. We are coming to here in today's podcast to tell people we are talking about the resurrection power, the power that can resurrect what is dead. Because some of you are still sitting saying it's dead when it's not dead. All you need is the power of the resurrection car to come and just bam and hit you. Your life is never the same again. You just need that. You just need that tonight. I'm just feeling because I'm connected with some people who are desperate to see their families because something is dead. To see their jobs, their wealth beings is, you know, something looks dead. You are not seeing any prospects of life in any of the situation around you. But let me tell you, we are going right now. The children stuff, you know, the children, things have gone haywire. You are like, oh, I tell you, if their dad was here, hallelujah. If their mama was here, uh, if so and so was here, let me tell you, I don't care what you are going through. I wish I had known this God a long time ago. You did not have to know God long much. You only need this God who comes in your situation unconditionally and just say, Bam! You are out of your situation. And this is why. Because what I want you to tell, I want you to understand what actually happened in this case. Because there are three people, right? Jesus is in his ministry, in his early ministry down the line. This is early ministry. He has not done so much. In only verse number, chapter number six, he has done only. We remember when you go to the sequence, you come to the book. Uh, you come to John chapter number two, you know, you find at the corner, he's done a, a little miracle. He's still not yet even allowed to do miracles anyway. He's still, he's only starting at the corner. And chapter six, five and six, we find five, feeding 5,000. These are little things that he's doing 5,000 yeah, feeding. It's all about feeding anyway. Anything could have happened. But we are coming to a situation where still people were still questioning the credibility of Jesus. Because let me tell you, your situation, hallelujah, is putting Jesus, like, you know, his name on line your situation but jesus saying i'm coming to retrieve my name out of your situation i'm going to demonstrate my power out of your situation because i don't want my name to be online it's not going to be online with your petty stuff i want to show you that i've been sent he's showing that he has been sent and this is why he came to a place where he now gets to where stuff starts to happen right it's mary and martha who are seeing the demonstration seeing lazarus come forth Lazarus comes out. 
the disciples, there are still Peter who are still questioning his calling because he's still a fishmonger. He need pocket money. Jesus is not giving them money. Do you know when you've when you been sub dealings outside, there are sometimes you are in, you know, I'm trying to, to do extra cash because I've got a family. Jesus is not putting us on a payroll. So he's working with disciples who are not even on a payroll. I'm telling you, who are saying, this guy says he'll be fishers for men and only to give us only bread and fish. But I don't have pocket money. You are working with people who are still asking you your, your credibility and say, who is he? Where is he coming from? What is he up to? And Martha and Mary, as they were cooking for Jesus, still they say, okay, he's called Jesus, but we hear that is Jesus here. But at least he loves Bethany. He's in Bethany. He loves come to Bethany through our house. But anyway, thank God, because he can come under our, our roof and we can eat with our brother and they were mates. Do you know sometimes, you know, familiarity can kill us because now these guys became too familiar for cooking for Jesus, but still have not an experience with Jesus. Ah, I'm touching stuff here, because familiarity is a disease. Hallelujah. Because you become familiar with somebody, then you don't know that, no, they are not there. He's not the one you are talking about, because of the, what of the office that they carry. They did not understand, sitting under their house didn't put them square with Jesus. Oh, that's tough. Put, cooking for Jesus was not good enough to make them level with Jesus. They should have continued to build difference in that Jesus is Jesus. So they thought, well, anyway, Jesus would have just jumped because you know, <coughs> the Mary and the mother, they're very good in cooking. <laughs> they're good in hospitality. Let me tell you, no, 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 it was not in the cooking. It was in the personal relationship and encounter of knowing the God you know. So now let's go and see what would happen because right now there are two people who are now blown out. Two people, two people, group of people who are being blown out. If not three. Hallelujah. If not three, we find here, hallelujah, we find right now that we see even, even when they saw the resurrection of their brother. But even so. But even now. I want you, child of God, to call to yourself and say, even now, pastor, my situation is where it is. Even now, I am believing for it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to go into your situation and say, yes, I cannot understand everything. But even now, I know that your daddy is able to do. Ah, he's going to turn things tonight. We are talking of real things. Don't be cute. When you are feeling it, it's time to say, even now, God, I'm still believing you for a miracle. But even now, can you just shout to yourself and say, but even now, I know it seems like it's not moving. I seems it's not. But just say, even now, I know. Even now. That's what was left in Mary and Martha. Just that context changed the whole thing. Their doubt and everything, but they found there's always where you find a thread to hang on. Some of you are still on a thread, but even now, but even now tonight, but even now, God has not forsaken you. Even now, God has not forsaken you. He's actually watching over you. He's about to perform things because what he did when he, Lazarus, came out, what blew people's mind was to see a dead man coming from the grave. That was the first resurrection before Jesus resurrected. That means he was demonstrating that he was life. So you can't kill life because it's life. I'm coming to people. You can't temper and kill life because Jesus is life. No wonder why he was demonstrating to them one of the biggest things. So everyone who watched Lazarus coming from the grave, everyone who watched him coming out, they were like, what? This is what is going to happen with your life. You are going to say, what? One thing I love, because some of you, you are only one to celebrate little things. Yes, let them see you. You can't even do your hair, do. Oh, this them, they are finished. You can see even how they walk. She can't look like she still has no, she's got her no future. I don't know. I know she messed up there. I know she messed up there. Have you not heard their story? <laughs> Go and Google it. You can find it. You know, you've got a life where you, people can even give references. But when God says, but even now, even now, child of God, 
in your state of mind where you are, when he's saying, my mind passed, I no longer think. I've given up praying. I've given up doing this. I don't know what to do because when I needed God, he was not there. When I was calling his name, he was not there. But the one thing, what is left in you, he said, but even now, I still have got something to stand upon that Jesus, you are still God. And this is why, because these girls became so anxious. They became so anxious. Hallelujah. Because what was the problem with these guys was they were on, they didn't have any encounter. They did not see Jesus do extreme. Do you know your situation is going to make people come to Christ like no one's business? You know you are going through what you're doing, but your your resurrection is coming because where you are coming from, you are coming from where you've been ruled out. You are coming from where you have been ruled out. Your ministry has said, oh, what are you trying to do? Where do you think you are going? Hallelujah. You are trying to get into a marriage. You say, ah, ah, now you are starting looking for a marriage at that age. Please forget. Why can't you just look at yourself? and just sit down and say be okay are uh, you looking at your financial status and said you know what i don't think i'll ever come out of reds i've been so redundant so many times i've been redundant so many times or else i've gone bankrupt so many times but let me tell you your comeback is stronger than where you went down in the mighty name of jesus i'm telling you your comeback is more than the grave clothes in the name of jesus your comeback is more than the stinking stuff that you've been covering you your i'm then talking to some people your story your bad habits and stuff is not going to even massacre Shika. Tonight we are talking to people. Don't even, don't even, don't even dare touch the dial because God is about to show himself. Even, but now, even now, but even now, I know over my children. I know over my children. I know over my company. I know over my ministry. But even now, Lord, I'm still trusting you with the little thread that is still hanging in me. I'll never. Zakaya Mashakata, Riklo Basaha, Holy Spirit, help us tonight because we are seeing. Because there's something the village of Bethany. Let me tell you one thing you are going to see happening in your life. It's something that is going to shock your village. Because Bethany had not even, Bethany was used to see Jesus walking in Bethany. Do you know there are people who know you in where the city you are? Whether you live in California. Whether you're in Texas or in Canada, they just see another woman walking around in Canada. Just say, oh, we know her. She has a good neighborhood. <laughs> ah, you are in South Africa. You are here in Europe. They know you in your village. Just like, oh, hi, hi. You know, they all love the, the Western stuff. Hi. You know, it's, it's okay. Thank God for hi. They can't say no more. It's only hi. Ah, tonight, we, but even so, but even so, because Bethany had not experienced anything. Bethany. And the Lord say, Evangel do you know, do you know, do you know Jesus didn't want instruments? He didn't want no instrument. He didn't say, okay, we are we are organized the top musician to come and sing for Jesus in Israel. So he's coming to do a crusade, Jesus shall come. No, he was a single-handedly man who go and have a crusade. Do you know when the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you do extraordinary things. When the, You don't need manpower when you're saying, God, ah, I wish so and so. Because these guys, they are my kuraba shaka. Do you know when you got Jesus, you don't wish for anyone to be with you. You can soak yourself in your closet and say, I'm not coming out of this closet. I am telling you, until things happen, I'm not coming out of this prayer room until something comes out. I'm not coming out of this fasting until I see a result. I'm kuraba I'm not stopping giving to God because my financial situation, I will do, I don't care, whatever it costs. Children of God, I find it here. I've come on this Friday. I've come for somebody. It's not yours. It's not the, this, this, this cannot be yours. If it's not yours, please, okay, you can keep us going. But for someone who's desperate here, you could be desperate for your brother. You could be desperate for your sister. Because Lazarus was dead. He was not concerned about what's going outside. So don't ever, you know, pretend to be cute. Don't be cute. You, you know your situation with your brother. Some of us are coming from relatives who are in really deep stuff. Do you know the more I am evangelizing and reaching out, I've found that every other family, every other household has stuff. It doesn't matter. It's a pastor. Whether you're a bishop, whether you're 
whatever. It's, it's got nothing to do. There's someone who is always in the grave. Someone is always in the worst scenario. So don't tell me, ah, this one is not for me, Pastor. With me, I'm cute. Oh, Pastor, it's all good. No, please. Please. Because right now, if you don't have the heart, then you don't have the heart. These guys would have said, okay, it's fine. Let's bear our brother Jesus. When he comes, we'll show him where his friend is. But they tried by all means to say, let's go look for Jesus. Jesus had all the invitations when he was sick and when he was dead, let alone to come on the fourth day when he's dead. So that means he had all the invitations that are given to some people. That means the sisters were persistent and consistent to say something. You got to stand for somebody. This guy that won their life, it's not Lazarus who started dying in, the, in Bethany. They buried, they've been to some funeral. So what would they bother them the death of their brother? It's another brother who just died anyway. But still, they said, no. He's a somebody who has been with Jesus. When you have been with Jesus, when you have been with Jesus, there's always a favor. When you've got Jesus, there's always the favor of the Lord. When you've been with Jesus, your life will never be the same again. That's why we are calling for our brothers to know the Jesus Christ we serve. When you've been with Jesus. That's why it's important to, to lead our brothers and sisters to Jesus. Please, you've got a role. If you've got family that are going through stuff, it's time to lead them to Jesus. Please try by all means. Come from a distance. Don't even turn and talk to them. Please try how you can entice them to understand the Jesus. Because right now, let me tell you, these guys... We are not told they were friends of Jesus. It's Lazarus. Sisters are only part. They didn't have no closeness. But he said, for the sake of us cooking for Jesus, that means that gives us favor to go and call him. Let me tell you, your service and everything that you are doing, God is saying, ah, I have not forsaken you, my daughter, my son. I know that I'm about to do things because when Lazarus came out, Bethany was never you hear and say they were all afraid. Have you ever had a situation where people say, oh, what? Repeat again. You want a testimony that is good, say names. It's another thing. Ah, do you know what they've got? Ah, they've got a good car. They say, oh, that's nice. What's make? When they finish, they say, make They say, oh, that's fine. Because they know there's one next door. Hallelujah. There's nothing that's wrong about that. What make you drive, what kind of house you have. But there's something that can only mesmerize the whole village. Bethany was left, hallelujah, in a state of another world when they said, Huh? I can see how Martha is walking. Walking because Lazarus is up. Do you know if any paparazzi was there ever? You know, you do something that can attract paparazzi. I can imagine Lazarus became one of the what? <laughs> When, when, when your brother becomes a player or an actor, and the main actor, then he becomes a celebrity. You will become a celebrity. Now we find Martha and Mary become celebrities because they are part and parcel of the process. Allow the process and let God to show himself because what he's about to do, hallelujah, it's changing the village. It's changing your livelihood. It's changing your friends. It's changing your working environment. Children of God, God has ordained us in this time and this season. I know we are going through a lot of things. Every one of us, we are under stuff. He has not forsaken you. But even so, but even now. Yes, you are on the thread. I can see you, brother, say, Pastor, bring it on. I don't know where you have been, but you are preaching very late because I seem like I can't see my way out. I can't see it, Pastor. Even when you are doing, I can't feel it. Even Martha and Mary, they didn't feel it. The things of God, you don't need to feel. It's not a feeling. Problem that we are having, we are having a church full of feelings. Ah, you want to sing because you are in the feeling. <laughs> Please, dead are the feelings before God. It's an encounter. We are tired of feelings, feeling like, you know, have you ever felt those few cliches and goosebumps of a moment? Maybe someone is saying the song that you love and you're like, Ooh, and you started to pretend like you're in the spirit. No, you are not. In the, it's only a feeling. It's looking for some real stuff. 
some real people tonight. I'm talking to people who now are not moving with the feelings. and not moving with cliches. There are people in the reality, in pain, who are saying, I am desperate for my baby. I am desperate for my husband. I am desperate for my wife. I am desperate for my children, my ministry. Hallelujah. I'm about to see things. Yes, I seem grounded. Yes, I seem cornered. But I know out of this, the glory of the Lord shall be seen. Let me tell you, children of God, God wants his own glory. Let us go. You know, I just want to make sure that all of us, eh, their faith was in trouble. Hallelujah, the sisters, their faith was in trouble because of the thing that Jesus did. But in the same thing, in their imperfection, that's one thing I love here, in their, their faith, their faith, however, was imperfect. There's a time, your faith, your faith, can be tempered around. So God is not content by your imperfection because you are through, through him, his righteousness is through what? Through him. It's not the righteousness of man, but through him. But the faith that is in him and the faith that connects, it come and revigorates you and become what you are. So tonight I'm talking to people of imperfection because you think God is not going to do it because you messed up yesterday. Uh, let me tell you, I've come to tell in your imperfection, God is one to show that he is a perfect God because he says no one is perfect. Hallelujah. No one, no one. I don't want to come with you to, for you to come over here feeling condemned and say, Pastor, I'm too unclean. I've done dead stuff. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what stuff you've been through, but one thing in your imperfection, God wants to show his perfect love. That is God, a God who doesn't even give you a conditional love. He's a gracious God. All he wants is a name to himself. All he needs is for you to raise up your hands and I surrender all to you, withholding nothing. You want to surrender your feelings. You want to surrender your ego. You want to surrender your zeals of your own. And then he will show himself. When he does that, Glory goes back to him tonight because, you know, Christ, because these guys got stressed with this situation because it was a situation that they would have not wanted to go to extreme. But God wanted to show in the extreme events. He wanted to show himself in these extreme moments of our life when we cannot do nothing. I know one thing I love because here, one thing what we are going to learn we are going to learn here. There's something that this event was going to make the, you know what, the, the ministry of Jesus more stronger. Do you know, they are going to acknowledge you through that miracle. Hallelujah. Jesus, because he was the one, the center of this. But the problem, people were still doubting. They did not know why Jesus was there. They heard that there's a Messiah, he's the son of man, but they did not see much. He was like one of, you know, any fortune tellers in the city. But this time, do you know, people are seeing you like an ordinary woman. People are seeing you like an ordinary guy. Yes, you don't carry a name to yourself. You will look like nothing when you are walking on the street. You are the least likely looked at it with people. People overlook you everywhere you go. At work, you are the one overlooked. Wherever you go in the family, you are the one overlooked. They talk, what can come out of this? What can come out of that? Hallelujah. Ah, yes, you've got a ministry. Ah, what can come? What can they do? Where have they been when others started? We all hear these things. But there's a God who's saying, I, uh, 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 I want God, me to be shown. And this is why. Because right now, the reason Lazarus' sickness and his death, hallelujah, was a display. Hallelujah. It was God visiting Bethany. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sickness of Lazarus and his death was the only point of God displaying himself. Your situation is a display cabinet where people shall say, yes, out of this came this. Hallelujah. If I got some really people on this podcast today who are saying, Pastor, you've nailed right straight there. I am telling you, your situation, yes, is stinking. Yes, you stink. I can help you to stink. But let me tell you, when they give you the perfume, let me tell you from a distance, everyone will say, hmm. Like a little dog sniffing around. What's going on here? Who's gone past here? Uh, it would be that one. People who even don't even think you're the one who deserves that. But let me tell you, Bethany was about to see the demonstration. Bethany. 
because your story is changing that village, it's changing that nation, the nation you are representing. It doesn't care wherever you are right now, child of God. God is about to display himself. His name shall be glorified. Because do you know one thing? You look at what has just happened during this pandemic. This pandemic, what it has done, it has come to put some tombstone on other people. Because there are some people who are not gonna, they're not going to rise again. And they just come really to put some tombstone in some people. It's so sad to say that because I see, if you don't see the Jesus in you, you are putting a tombstone on yourself. I'm talking to people tonight. I want to tell a pastor, I want to tell whether you're a child of God from wherever you are coming from, even you are an evangelist, you are a bishop, or even a child of God, even in your marriage set, you know, setting, wherever you can be at your workplace. If you don't look at yourself, looking at how much people are being retrained, how many people are being retrenched, and how many who are in the fair and who are in the fair, when you look at that, at that statistic, you are putting a tombstone over yourself. But there's something I love. What is it that is left of you? But even now. Jakadaru. But even now. Jakadaru as it is right now. I know. When you ask God. Whatever you ask. He will give it to you. I am telling you. He says in Isaiah 59. My hands are not shortened. To give you what belongs to you. Neither my ears are heavy. To hear your cry. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 33, hallelujah, says, call unto me, Ramasataya. I'll hear, I'll hear you and do great mighty things. Who are you calling to? One thing about, I love about this, as I round this message tonight, the problem we are having, who is of the first point of contact? Who is our first? These are the pointers. I know the disciples were mesmerized. So it shook the disciples to see Lazarus coming. And it shook Mary and Martha and Bethan, the whole village. These are three people, three kind of people who were the whole village, the disciples, and Martha and Mary. Let me tell you, but one question I have tonight before I leave this platform, who is your first point of contact? We don't see Mary going to the chief of the city. We don't see Martha arguing with the sister and saying, ah, oh, let's try the paramedics. Let's try this. Their first point of contact to know that Jesus was in this house. He has left his sand in this house. They've tried going to call the doctors. Thank God for the doctors. But there are certain places where doctors, they come to a place where they can't do no nothing. What is your point of contact? I'm coming to challenge the church today. Because right now, when you know your point of contact, you are about to see things happening right now. You are telling the tithes in your family. You are telling the tithes in the whole entire generation. Anything you are giving up for right now, you are giving it to the rest of the generation. And what they did, Bethan was never the same. Do you know this? There are certain things that we go through that affect the whole entire village. Because already Bethany was in mourning. Bethany was in mourning. Certain things, they happen. Bethany was in mourning. There are things that are happening in, in our village. The problem, it was not going to be one of those funerals because it was going to take the credibility away of Jesus because they were going to suffer a lot. Mary and Martha were going to be asked and say, okay, you think Jesus, you were cooking for Jesus. And do you think, can we, can we worship the God who can let you down? He has let his friend down. So why should we worship him? Do you know one time I've always said when I'm praying, I said, God, do you know, have you been having an attitude? Please, what I say is what I walk. You get to get in an attitude. When you say, God, your name is online. Your name right now is online. Uh, we are looking for children of God because when you take him as your point of contact, you don't go run away everywhere, crashing here, I'm going here, I'm going. Your point of contact, go to Jesus and tell him that your name is online in Bethany. They know which house you are going. They know the house where you are going. Put him online. Put him right on the spot and say, ah, Jesus, if you were here, 
Whatever is gonna go on, but it's all about you people who always they will never follow you again. And what he did, we are all still standing on the power of the resurrection. I've come to somebody tonight. I'm only coming to tell you that you can do it. You can do. Make him in your point of contact. Let me the first point of contact, anything you do, not your brains. Your brains have let you down. Hallelujah. Your own three catches of brains have failed you. You try to reason around. You try to say, if I know, you know, the problem, we are a generation too much reasoning, too much reasoning, when our breakthrough is only at the fingertip, just at the fingertip. Sometimes sounds like, Pastor, you're making it easy, I know my story. Yes, we know the stories, we know the stories, we know what's happening in the whole world, but let me tell you, I'm coming here only to fire you up, because I know you can do it, I know you can do it. I know you can do it out of God. I know your story is going to be your message. I know your story is going to be your ceremony. I know your mercy is going to be the message of the season that will change the whole entire clan in the name of Jesus. So, point of contact. Your situation is going to bring the glory to God. So this is why, as I round this message, I said your situation is only bringing glory to God. Because God, we are not here just to be lousy, sitting lousy, just feeling grumpy. No, please, your story is another man's salvation. It's another man's deliverance. Because when they see you with your head up, how did you do it? You know what? My sister said, God is good. Then you want to see the God I serve? Come on, my sister. We want people who are saying, Pastor, I'm not letting this situation take me down. I am going to be in my acre. I'm going to be on my altar. I shall raise my altar. I know my way. I know my way out. I know the point of contact. It's Jesus. Jesus. Let me just go. So number two, I said your situation is only to bring the glory to Jesus. So don't worry where you are. I know my sister, my brother. We are going to celebrate together. You will pet me up and say, Pastor, you've been so beautiful to us. You've been so faithful to the word of God. You never shy away from telling us the truth. Sometimes it's not easy to stand here and tell you that when you are going through what you are going through. Because it seems like it minimizes what you are going through. But I know, yes, I minimize because I know I serve a great God. The God of the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, El Shaddai, God of all powers. I am not afraid of and ashamed of him. I don't care. In the morning I'll call upon. In the evening I call upon. Jesus be God. You know the thing, something I love about our first point of contact, I remember having to chat with people as we go, said, things are happening to some people very far away remotely. And then to Mary and Martha, who cook for Jesus, they are questioning. That's where the secret is. Even what has been happening this whole week, they're calling the phone, things are manifesting the other side. Things are being said, they're like, wow, God, what is happening here? The power of God at work. But Mary and Martha are around. They're around. They're busy trying to do some cooking. Huh? Some cooking. But they don't want any relationship. They're busy doing other things. They can't acknowledge that they have the master at their house. Do you know right now in your sitting room, he is right there. Please bring him back. You, 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 you gave him a red card already. Bring him back. Let your house not start to be a house of God. Because sometimes our houses are not even conducive for God to dwell. It's not conducive. It's not conducive. Let's create an environment, children of God. Let's create. I'm coming to you tonight because I know it's God who wants to do it. You are not going to go forever like this. Hallelujah. So I said, the number three. You know, in your imperfection, faith through Jesus. Hallelujah. Your faith through Jesus shall be revitalized, rejuvenated. Hallelujah. Turning, bringing your doubts into reality. I am telling you right now, in your imperfection, faith to Jesus. Oh, when we should have only come ahead, but turns out late. In your imperfection, you start to question Jesus. Why did you come late? 
I know that's our imperfection. But the Lord is saying tonight, I'm coming to my church. When the church seems like it's shut, when it is not, looks like there's nothing going on, but let me tell you that even now, God is about to show himself strong. Children, God, let's come out in thousands. Let's flood our Facebook with the word of God because right now, this is the time for the demonstration. This is the time for the demonstration. Hallelujah, the power of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. One thing I love, when, 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 when Mary and Martha said, but even now, they prophesied their breakthrough. That's one good nugget to, to, to note. Because the problem we are having, we are arguing with our breakthrough. We are arguing with our answers. Because one thing, as much as they were doubting, but they prophet, that was a prophetic message when they say, but even now, when you, you ask from God whatever you ask, that's only when they changed the whole issue. Because they started prophesying positive. I am talking to people who are good in talking what negative about their lives. Right now, change your tongue. Please, tongue your tongue. Tongue it. Take a tongue and clip it. Just tell it right now. Start to speak life. Speak life. I know God. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of cancer. I know Jesus, I'm coming out of death. I know Jesus, I shall not die a single. I know Jesus, hallelujah, I'm going to school. I know Jesus, I'm going to be married. My children are coming. Come to speak right. My marriage shall be restored. Once you start to speak negative, Proverbs 18, verse number 21, life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Those who believe it shall eat the fruit thereof. We are all swallowing the fruits of all what we speak. Healing is right there. Breakthrough is right there. Tongue your tongue. Martha decided, said, mm -mm. I, I, I don't want to have a big mouth here. Then he said, Jesus, Jesus, I, I, I know, I know when you ask. You see, he's asking Jesus to ask there. They're not believing what they see there. That's the problem. Because they are like, they, they, are, they are minimizing Jesus. They are saying, okay, you'll ask someone again. Jesus was the answer right there. Do you know some of your answers are right on your lap, are on your, on your knees, even on your tongue. Turn your tongue out. Say, Jesus, tongue it. Let me start to speak life. I shall be this. I shall be that. Nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to address and care how old I am. I'm still going to school. I shall go and have my profession. I shall get married. I shall have my company. I shall have my ministry. I shall evangelize. You know, I will see miracles because God, in your old or in your worst moment, is about to do certain things that no one has ever done. Tonight, I'm talking to some people who are saying, Pastor, I was so desperate in my life to hear this message. It is yours. Receive it. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, said number four, because prophesy over your wasted situation. Because God is about to do even so. Even now. But even now. Believe Jesus is going to bring your dead environment back to life. Your situation is going to strengthen someone. Your breakthrough is going to be a miracle or a sermon or to strengthen other weak people. Please. So don't worry you are the candidate. Just call yourself, I'm a candidate. I didn't know it, Pastor. I was complaining about my situation. No, your situation has taken you to be the candidate. You've been recruited. What you are going through is a recruitment. Yes, you needed what you needed when you were 20 years. You can't find. To 30 years, you couldn't find. No, God won't say you are the candidate because I want to demonstrate myself through you. You are God's demonstrated candidate. So tonight, it is good. It is good. Mm. because whatever is happening right now, as I'm going to pray with people, I want you to believe tonight that whatever is happening, you are the candidate. Stand there as long as you put God first. Let him be the point of contact and speak life into that situation. 
hold on for another day because that same one I can see it. Please, by the time we are going to the building, right now I'm going to see a revival. People coming, I don't know. We have to to, to book to book prior to the service. How we are going to make sure that testimonies are heard. Probably it will be really something. Because already they've started. People are asking me, Pastor, when are we going to church? Because I can't wait to go and celebrate with other people. Because through this pandemic, we have seen God in the dead situation. Because he has resurrected what was dead even in the pandemic. What was not seen is starting to be seen. Your life is starting to come out in the name of Jesus. So I want you to raise up your hands right now because I'm going to pray for you from your, to your death situation. Hallelujah. It could be your marriage. It could be your children who are in drugs. It could be you are sick and you are finding yourself that you have been told by the doctor you are going to go. Let me tell you whose report do you believe. Isaiah chapter number 53 verse number 1. Whose report do you believe? You need to know whose report and who is your first contact point of contact to know and what are you speaking through your mouth it is important so i want to pray for you tonight in the name of jesus that in your situation hey rabbi Shatire, father in the name of jesus tonight i'm coming right now but i'm coming to the church right now online wherever they are participating tonight in the name of jesus there are people here in the west situation there are people right now lying in the grave no one can intercede for them but right now hallelujah 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 you are about to tell Demonstrate your resurrection power. You are about to resurrect everything that is dead tonight. I say in the name of Jesus, come out of your grave. Come out of your doubt and imperfection. Because the Lord is about to do. He's doing it tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And resurrection power. But even now, Lord, it is never too late. Even now, Lord, in my dead moment. Even now, Lord, in my hopelessness. Even now, Lord, in my my depression even now lord in my divorce paper in the even now lord you are still god you're about to show right now tonight in every situation for people who are saying you know things have not been all right i know you've done your last paperwork you've done your last barrister you've done your last lawyer and you have no one to stand for you your family is in tatters Everything is going, nothing is coming together. I'm coming in the name of Jesus because the demonstration this year you are going to have your celebration, Father, in the name of Jesus. I am telling you right now, some of you, you are going to have your surprise around the corner in the name of Jesus. I come against every argument that is coming in your children right now. I come against every argument, every generational stuff, that almighty God, every family argument, I come against it right now. Every irreparable situation you are about to show tonight uh, you are turning things around uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus father I bless your holy name because you are God in the business I thank God for these candidates here I thank God for their life because God you have chosen my sister to be in that position you are about to elevate them thank you for elevating that son my son you are being elevated people are going to be shocked that you, are you the one who is preaching this God? We never thought you are irrepar You are repairable. I'm telling you, I, uh, your reputation, children of God, there are people here who got a reputation. When people are saying, if God can use you, he can use a donkey to do anything. Hallelujah. If you are going to heaven, I'll take my chicken and my dogs going. Right now you are going where others have never been. In the name of Jesus. I said you are going to go. In the name of Jesus. Rianda Masekete. Marie Klonde Bekarika. Rindo Basaka. Tonight, everything, every discouragement, every anxiety and disappointment, you are turning things around. Their names are changing. They shall be called Israel from Jacob in the name of Jesus. Manu Seke Abasika from Sarah to Sarah in the name of Jesus. From Abraham to Abraham in the name of Jesus. Names are being changed tonight. I'm talking to people's situation. Hallelujah. Their Lazarus is coming back. Their faith is going to come back in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you and give you praise and honor tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Children of God, children of God, if you think you need some more stuff, you can hold me, get hold of me. Please don't hesitate to call me because things are happening. Don't be shy. I'm quite reachable. 
and I'm really quite relating. Your story is not new to me, because God is not. It's not new to God. It's about to do. They took their story to Jesus. It was not new for him, because he was the resurrection power. So if you don't have no Christ tonight, and you've never seen Christ or you've been please, you want to reconcile your relationship to God tonight. I'm giving you an opportunity. I'll pray for those who are saying, I'm joining you, Pastor, but I've not been going to church for a long time. I'm going to pray a prayer of reconciliation because you want to come back. Maybe it was just a life-changing sermon for you and say, where do I start to understand this when I've been right in the world that I've known? I'm giving you the opportunity to pray with Father. I pray for those who had backslidden. Father, we had lost their faith along the way, but they are coming back. Father, I pray that God, you touch them. Father, with the people who have said touch them tonight in the mighty name. Father, visit them right now. Visit them in the name of Jesus. Those who don't even know God right now because you're resurrecting what was dead in them to come back to life. Father, I thank you and I give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let us all share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit live and abide with us and now forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, children of God. If, but even now, your situation is tenable. Your situation is over. Just speak life. Because God is going to demonstrate his power through you and in you. In Jesus' mighty name, shalom.